What would you do if you had no fear? What would you do if you had no fear? Or maybe a better question to start with is, what have you not done because you've been afraid? I can list some here for me. Skydiving, bungee jumping, roller coasters, zip lines, climbing walls, uh, avoiding places in towns that people tell you not to go, not going to places on vacation because you've heard it would be really bad, Um, maybe changing a career, trying something that you've always wanted to do but people tell you you can't. Fear freezes us, stops us cold in our tracks, and keeps us from doing a lot of things. We fear what's going to happen to our loved ones. Right? As Logan's brought up here today to the baptismal font, I'm sure his parents are wondering what's going to happen to him throughout his life. There's going to be nights where they're staying up late wondering where he's at, why he hasn't called. Right? As parents, we do that. We worry about those kind of things. We worry about or we fear our uncertain future. Well, I get that promotion. Will my kids do good in school? We fear continued war around the world. We fear the economic downturn here in our own country, in our own hometowns. We wonder and we fear possibly where our next meal could come from, where our next rent payment is going to come from. We fear how we're going to be able to pay that bill that we know is coming sometime in the mail. We fear being accepted in our next stages of life, be that middle school, high school, college, going to the retirement center, right? What else holds us back? What else do we fear? It's physiologically been proven that fear and excitement are the same. The physical bodily symptoms of fear and excitement are identical. If they hooked two people up to machines and traced what their body's doing and made one of them sit through a fearful thing and one of them sit through something exciting, their body responses would be exactly the same. Breathing elevates, heart rate elevates, sugar starts to get released more into the blood because you need that reaction time, you need that boost. Any other Activities of the nervous system that prepares us for flight or fright are the same. For fl- fight or flight are the same. You can't tell physiologically whether a person is afraid or excited. And you can tell that by have you ever been someplace and somebody just did something like, you know, I'll use the roller coaster as an example. They come off the roller coaster and they go, oh my gosh, that was so terrifying, you have to do it. Right? I was scared out of my wits. You've got to try it. Right? There's no difference. The only difference between fear and excitement then, if there's absolutely no physiological difference between fear and excitement, what is the only difference? Our reaction. Yes. Right now, I've got butterflies in my stomach flying every time I'm standing up here in front of you. I am so on edge um, simply because that's the way it has to be. I think that's the way it needs to be. That means our interpretation of our condition makes the complete difference. Reading our sweating palms and our increased heart rate when we're meeting a person for the first time, or like I just said, every time we climb up here, pastors climb up here on this platform or into a pulpit and preach every Sunday morning. I have butterflies when I do this. If we read that as a sign of excitement or fear, dramatically affects how we approach the situation in question. Right? Three times in our passage today, Jesus says to the disciples, do not be afraid or do not fear. Three times. 
Jesus has commissioned these 12 disciples and is about to send them out on their own mission. A mission during which they will both exercise great authority and need to demonstrate a profound amount of trust. You see, they have the power to cast out demons and to heal the sick, but they also have to take no money or no extra provisions. They're only allowed to go with the sandals on their feet and the clothes on their back. They have to depend upon the grace of God shown through the hospitality of those who they meet. They have profound power to heal the sick and to cast out demons, but they also have to have a profound faith and the fact that God is sending him out there and God is going to take care of them. Jesus levels with his disciples as he gets ready to send them out about the challenges that they're going to face. These are the same challenges that we face day in and day out. They include rejection, slander, persecution. For the disciples, possibly even death. Right? For us in our age, in our place here, In the United States, we do not face death because we go out and proclaim to be a Christian. But don't think just because we've made it into the 21st century that that doesn't happen in other places all over this world. There are many places where you can't wear this symbol around your neck because you will be arrested. It's illegal. And you will be put to death. So there are Christians who go out day in and day out and do face death in this day. We should remember that when Matthew writes this, he's not only writing this about the original 12 disciples, but he's also writing this to the disciples of the community to which he is writing his whole gospel. Because they are facing these same, same, same situations. And he's not only writing it to those disciples, he's also writing it to you. Because you're going to face those exact same things. And I think there's three things... <laughs> See, it's a good Lutheran sermon. There's three things in this passage that Jesus points out to us about fear. First, fear is in many ways the opposite of faith. When we fear something, we don't have faith in something, right? We're worried about what's going to happen. Jesus tells us, do not fear, which helps us to know that good news comes after that. It's a biblical way to show what that the news that comes next is good news. Anytime you have a prophet or anyone say in the Bible or an angel, a prophet, an angel, or anyone say in the Bible and they say, do not fear, that means good news is coming after that. But if you ever have a prophet, an angel, or anybody in the Bible say, woe to you, tuck tail and run, because it's going to be bad. Jesus says, do not be afraid because it's good news. Something for us to listen up and hold on to. Secondly, Fear, as the opposite of faith, shows us that courage is rooted in God's promises. We can have courage in the fact that God said He was going to do this for us and that He was going to be with us. So we have no place to fear anything. Right? Jesus reminds the disciples and us not to fear because while their opponents may be able to hurt them physically, they cannot do any harm to them spiritually. Right? God is the one who has power over both body and spirit. And God has promised to guard us and protect us and bring us to eternal life. The God who created and tends to everything, every living thing, values us more than anything else. Right? What does it say about the sparrows? Two sparrows are worth a penny and God knows when one of them falls to the ground. He loves you. And He cares for you. And that's where the courage comes in and the promise that He's given to us. Third, fear of conflict may be one of the most debilitating fears of all. How many of you have ever shied away from something because you didn't want to be in conflict with someone you love? I'm not going to remind you you're in church, but you don't have to raise your hand because that person might be sitting next to you, actually. Right? We get so afraid of conflict that we're willing to do just about anything to avoid it. Whether within our immediate families or the larger family of faith, our witnesses get muted, our convictions are surrendered, and any movement forward is greatly limited by our fear of upsetting the apple cart. Right? We'll do whatever we can to make sure that the people around us that we love don't get upset with the way that we feel or believe. Right? 
Matthew's original context here likely included people who were rejected by their families because of their faith. Remember when these Gospels were written, people were just learning who Jesus was. And the fact that he had turned Judaism over on top of its head as the coming Messiah. And many of them didn't believe that he was the Messiah. So to believe that meant that you were setting yourself against your family. And we often allow our hopes and our plans and missions to be held hostage by those who threaten conflict when things don't go their way. In these situations, Jesus invites us to remember that there are worse things in life than conflict. And that the call to follow Christ and take up His cross will, have in, will in fact have costs that sometimes include conflict. In order for us to take God's message into the world, it's not always going to be a walk in the garden. We're going to have to do things that make people upset. But God is always with us. Even in conflict, even in those times of fear, we have to remember, as it said already, as I said already, two sparrows are sold for a penny, and God knows when one of them falls to the earth, and God knows the number of the hairs on the top of your head. Count them daily. And He cares about you. So don't be afraid. You are more value than one sparrow, than two sparrows, than all the sparrows in all of the world. And God cares for you. Jesus is telling us, do not fear. You are of great value to God. So if you need a reminder about that and the things that you're going through, write that on your bathroom mirror. If you need to have me remind you after service, come and ask me. I'll remind you after service. Or write it on a piece of paper and put it on your rearview mirror in your car. Just make sure it doesn't block your rearview mirror because that would not be good. You need to be able to see. But do not fear. You are of great value to God. God's promises are true and He will always be with you. So remember that fear is not forget everything and run. It is, in fact, face everything and rise because Christ is always with you and will be helping you through everything and everywhere you go. Amen.